live again. Another day. I'm only, I'm only gonna go live for about 30, uh, 15, 30 minutes because, um, well, because I am, I'm just gonna do this right here. I'm not really gonna do a lot. Today we're just going to be doing that. We may do the ends, but I'm gonna do this today. And then another day, I'm going to, um, I'm going to be weathering the um, the other side. So this is the first side, um, but I won't be recording the other side, me weathering the other side, because uh, you don't really need to see that. I already showed you guys the the technique on how to make the rust streaks. I already showed you guys the technique on making the on making the on uh, making the dirt pile up right here. Uh, so yeah, I don't think I don't think we're gonna do anything else, um, but get some weathering powder on all of this right here. Hey, how are you? How you doing, man? Good to see you. You joined. We're gonna be we're gonna be weathering this this car up right now. I have a reference photo pulled up right here so that we will have um, a small image in our heads of what we're gonna be doing right here. All right, so here's what we're gonna do right now. We're gonna use some chalk pastels. These chalk pe uh, chalk pastels you can get for about um, ten dollars, ten or, f or even three dollars. Hey, Jay. Hey there. Um, so, yeah, these are the chalk pastels we're going to be using. Um, it looks like they use a pretty dark uh, coating. So, we're going to use some of this right here. And then we're going to be using probably a little bit of this. Or we might just use this because this is kind of more prototypical. All right. So, what we're going to be doing is... Um, well, I'm going to show you guys how to use the chalk pastels. I'm going to use this right here. This. This kind of brush. We're going to use that kind of brush to. Um, we're going to use that brush to. To add the weathering powder. Okay, so now I'm going to use a hobby knife to uh, take the, the chalk. Here, let me show you. Just rub it side to side. Should be able to get some of that out right there. Here we go. I was rebuilding an NSSD 7880 cmd and then That's great. That's great. I love um, I love it when um, when you're able to rebuild a model or um or a locomotive, as in like detailing it, and probably buying a new shell. Um, I was able to do that with my BNSF GP, but um, but I sold it to some kid at um at the train show. So, all right. So we're gonna give a little bit on our brush like this. We're gonna get a little bit on our brush. Let me look at the reference photo. So we're gonna start off from the bottom to the top, right here. Make sure you get in all the crevices. Sorry if it's a little shaky. The camera, um, the camera's mounted on my desk, so. Here. 
So this is basically highlighting and um, showing you guys the um, transformation of how this white turns into dirty and um, just rusty. There you go. There you go. Sorry about that, guys. Um, I don't know what happened. Just uh, just stopped connecting for some reason. But we're back. And um, let's keep on weathering this car. So I'm making a mixed weathering powder thing right here. So I have some of this I'm going to bring into this little thing right here, the side. And I'm going to bring this right here. Just like that. And then in the middle, the middle you're gonna get some of that and you're gonna mix it up. Giving you a very nice rusty color to continue on the weathering process. Okay, so if you are a very impatient person like me, or you very are patient, also like me, because I am also very patient, but right now I just need to, um, I just want to get this done, so I'm going to get a better brush that'll be able to pick up some more paint, and it'll just be a little bit quicker, because these things, you don't really need to take your sweet time on. I'm not really meant for that, actually. So, let me see if this brush is good. Oh, that's really good. No, this will work, big time. All right, let's get some of this here. All right, so we're loaded up our bristles. Get some of this. Remember, this is rust and dirt. It's not supposed to be perfect. Um, it's supposed to be um, rusty and dirty. Look, you can already see the transformation going on this car. This is absolutely amazing just to see. This car is going to come out looking really good. I'm not bragging, by the way. I'm just saying. I'm just talking to myself, narrating. All right, so I said something, NS4, 4587 is NS9388. So I looked up NS, um, Nine uh, ninety three eighty eight right now. Looks good. Looks like a really good project. A very good project locomotive. Uh, are you gonna weather it as well? Hey, the real friend. How are you doing? Oh, thanks, man. Thank you. Yeah, today we're gonna do. We're gonna be working on this. Um, on this hopper car again. So. Yeah, we're gonna be, um, we're just gonna be adding some more weathering powders. <laughs> That's from yesterday. So, alright, let's get, let's continue. Yeah, let's go back to the reference photo. Alright, so the reference photo shows that there's a little bit more, um, brown. So we're gonna, we're gonna scrape up some more brown. Load up our bristles, 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 bristles. I don't really know how to say that. 
and we're going to start from the top, from the bottom. Actually, right here, we're going to do a little bit more uh, darker rust. So we're going to get some red and some black. And we're going to mix this together. That is much better. All right, man, no problem. Also, if you're watching this after I upload it, tune in again here in a minute. All right, sounds good. Can't wait to have you back. Yeah, if you're if you're seeing this as I uploaded it on YouTube and you didn't join the live, well, you're missing out, man. You know, join the live, ask me questions, how I got into the hobby, what makes me stay in the hobby, why HO scale, it's so expensive, absolutely insane. Um, yeah, ask me questions, guys. I'm gonna be just chilling here for a little bit, so might as well get to know some of you guys online. You never know, we might have more in common than you think. All right, we're gonna get some of this right here. And we're gonna add it up here. Let's use a little bit more brown. And a little bit more red. I'm gonna use some more red first down here in the bottom. Just to bring out the rust. We're going to use the brown up here. There's a question out. Let's check this question out. So dude on the road friend. Hey, oh, thank you, man. Um, do you seal after every layer or wait until you're done? Okay, so I would very, very much suggest on not sealing after every layer. See, if you seal after every layer, you won't really get that magic that's happening as you're applying the other layer to that layer that you just applied, if that makes any sense. See how this rust right here, this red rust, is blending in with the brown rust? That was the first layer I, I, um, I added. And then the red rust kind of blends in with it, giving it, giving it a brighter look and just a much more prototypical look. It's just, it's just when you do the layers, you don't do them individually. You do them... Um, no, you do do them in individually. You just don't um, seal it so that it stays that color. Because if you steal it, I mean, if you seal it, you don't, um, it won't come off and it'll stay like that. So yeah, do not, do not seal after every layer. 
And plus, it's a waste of um, of uh, paint of the matte finish if you of the clear coat if you um, if you sue after every layer. Um, so yeah. Okay, so that my friends looks looks really good. I mean, look at that as a car just all together. That looks pretty good. I think we're gonna leave it like that. We don't want it too weathered uh, right here. But now we're gonna be working on this right here. So let's move this a little bit over here. And zoom in right there. Yeah, no problem, no problem. Yeah, I'm here, I'm here to help guys. So just if you have a question, ask. This side of the car is a little bit dirty. It's fine. It doesn't really matter that much. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Now what we're going to do here is do this right here. for that is something a little bit darker maybe not brownish but a little bit more black so that is like like a like a dark brown i don't really want to use this black yet so here let's just use some of this and then we'll see what happens i mean if you think about it weathering a locomotive or a freight car is never going to be really the same technique unless you're doing all the cars exactly the same which personally is pretty boring to me not saying that it's bad or that i won't like it or that other people won't like it it's just um it's just not really uh not really my type so what i'm saying is when you weather, it's good to sometimes work outside of the box of your small, of your small, like, God, how is, why is it so hard to say? Um, okay, let me use an example. If I'm weathering all of my cars, like I weather my hopper car, and it's all rusty on the sides, and I, and I do that to all my box cars, and I do that to all my tanker cars, then they would all look the same and there would not be anything else to look at. It'll get boring after a while because they're all exactly the same. But if you learn new techniques and you find out a way to get, have all those cars looking exactly the same as the prototype, having different kinds of rust streaks, adding different kinds of colors, and mixing different kinds of colors together to get the right color for your car, then that just makes weathering just a whole new thing to you. Because now you're not only opening up to new um, new techniques and new um, and new colors and new ways to weather, but you're also opening yourself up to new things you can do in the future for your locomotives, for your other cars that you're planning to get or that you have in your cart. I'm just saying it's always good to have a little bit of different like kinds of weathering and um, different kinds of cars. It's always good to try new things. All right, so we're going to add more powder to this. You know what? I didn't really um, didn't really want to do this until I had like tape or something, but I don't seem to have any tape around anywhere. The reason why I'm gonna have tape is because I'm going to is because I'm going to weather these right here. Yeah, exactly. They don't weather the same. I mean, if you think in real life, and um, 
you see a car in Canada where it's snowing and then you see a car in California where it's raining, they're not going to have the same stuff. When you want to weather blue, do you see a light, a light blue powder? Um, actually, no. But I would try that. But I don't have any light blue, plow uh, light blue powder, so I just use this titanium white. Or if you want to use something else. Oh, look at this. I actually do have blue weathering powder right there. So maybe you could use um, light blue weathering powder, but I wouldn't. The first thing I would try is to give it a fade with an airbrush. But um, but maybe you don't have an airbrush. Or maybe you don't have the time to work um, with an airbrush to get it all set up and stuff. But um, usually that's not the case. So if you want to just do weathering powders, which... Um, don't get me wrong, I do it all the time. Uh, I would say probably start off with some white weathering powder. But if you can get your hands on blue light weathering powder, um, you would probably want to try that as well. But first start off with white. Um, that's a good question though. Thank you for asking. Because I did the, the yellow... Uh, the yellow car with the uh, with the uh, with the uh, white weathering powder fade here. Look at this roof. The roof used to be extremely orange, but I didn't use an orange light a light orange weathering powder to to lighten it up. The only thing I used was white weathering powder. I didn't use light orange weathering powder to to weather that. So that's how that's kind of like a test, you know, of um of what I'm talking about right here. And you can also see on the sides right here on the top. It's a little bit a little bit weathered on the top. And that's blue. So I don't know. It's really what you like at the end and how and how um and how faded that car is. Because if it's really faded, then you're probably going to use white. But if it's not as faded as as, um, as you think it is and you just want to go once, then you should um, just use blue weathering powder, I guess. Or a light, very just light brushed on um, white weathering powder. Yeah, no problem, man. Uh, I'm going to go see if I can find some tape. I'll be right back. Give me 20 seconds. Okay, so I don't have any tape that I can find in 20 seconds. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, I'm going to try something. We're going to get some paper and we're going to cut it. Let me see if that works. There we go. There we go. All right, let's see if this works. Like I said, it's always good to try new things. This is a new thing I'm trying. We're actually gonna do it like this, because that's a little bit easier. Um, actually, so a small little piece on the top. And I 
Okay, so this is embarrassing because I cut it the wrong way. There we go. All right. Will not give you up. Will not let you down. All right, let's see how that came out. Wow, it's better than I thought. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna do some adjustments though, because um, that doesn't look, you know, that doesn't really go with the rest of the car. So what we're going to do, we're going to get a small piece of paper we're gonna get tweezers. Now we're going to dip it in some water. Just a little bit. Dip it on a small piece of paper. So I have to reach across. Here we go. Here's our wet small paper towel. We're actually gonna take some off from here because I do not like that one bit. And then we're going to take some off from here. Okay. Now let's get a dry paper towel. Basically, if you look, what we did right here is we kind of gave it like a small wash, but with a weathered powder. So we brought that up. We brought that out. It looks good. And now, now we're going to, so in the photo, it looks really dark. I think I'm going to get some of this right here. This right here is specially made for what I am about to do. Let's get a little bit. And you put it right there just like that. Bet you didn't even see that, huh? A small little detail right there. This especially made to bring out those small little details. There we go. That looks pretty good. Now let's get um, a small brush. that let's go see the progress of the weathering on the side of the box car thank you so much yeah it is pretty cool here also don't be afraid to make mistakes because that is what 90% isopropyl alcohol is for 70%. So you can see I added it a little bit too much right there, and then I try to fade it in a little bit, which um, irritated the, the, um, the what's it called? The 
thinner, the paint. What's good about making mistakes when you're weathering is that sometimes it looks much better than before when you didn't make this mistake. So that is a small tip for you. Also, it's not a tip for me. I heard it from some guy off the internet. So I'm stealing it from him. I actually don't know his name. Was it was it Dan's Railroad? It's one of those. But um, but yeah, it's not bad to make mistakes. Here we go, that looks pretty good, honestly. All right. Now let's see what we got here. All right, that looks good. Okay, so yesterday I did these streaks right there um, bef after I did this streak. Now what I want to do is I want to fix this right here. The correct way to fix a streak like that is to get some acrylic paint, add it to the area where you need to fix. We're using two, I'm gonna be using um, earth brown and flat black. I'm gonna get my paintbrush here and we're gonna mix it. Good thing about this is that it gives it a great Coloring for the rest and for everything else in general. There we go. Might as well add some stuff over here and over here just to bring out some more detail. So that looks a little bit better, honestly. Uh, it's not blurry on your screens, right? 
I don't think it's blurry. It's just blurry on this screen, which is weird. Let me refresh that. It's weird. No, on my TV, it's not blurry. So it should be fine. All right, so now let's get to the fun part. And that is one of my favorite parts to do. Now we're going to get some oil paint loaded up on the bristle brushels and dab it on there here let's get some fresher oil paint we're gonna use burnt umber because burnt umber is the ones we used up here so it would just work out perfectly fine There you go. Okay, so you can see that it's a little bit on the side of everything. It doesn't really matter because this will be giving us our streaks. Let's take this off. Get the brush. The bench side. Well, it looks like my family's home, guys. What up? Let me uh, close the door really quick. We're back and we're ready to roll. Let's start off with these rust streaks, huh? Look at that. Those rust streaks look good. I had to take that off because that was getting annoying. All right, so it seems that there's more than I wanted. As in, um, more, uh, more, um, more of the, what's it called? The gamma soul. But it's always good to find out where exactly you are. All right, let's try this again. Actually, that looks pretty good. Um, yeah, I don't think I'm gonna do Anything else? That looks that looks good. Wait, no. Here, let's. There we go. 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 That looks much better. What do you guys think? I think that looks pretty good. Yeah, that looks really good. It goes with the car. Yeah, I think we're going to leave it at, like that. That looks pretty good. Here. I'm just seeing. Here. You guys know that this is going to be... This. I don't want... I don't want this right here to be too dark. I actually want that to be pretty light. So we're going to be using 
white pigment. I'm going to use the white pigment to find out if this will work or not. All right, so what we're going to use to apply the weathering powder is something soft, something that'll work. Here we go. This right here. This will work. There we go. All right, loaded our bristles up. We're gonna take some off on the paper and we're going to go like that. On the top. Okay, that looks different. Oh, good, thank you, thank you so much. All right, that's gonna be enough of that weathering powder. I think it looks good, but we can make it look better. So let's get another paintbrush out that we can use um, to blend it. Here we go. This is actually a makeup brush right here. We're gonna use. There we go. That's what I was looking for right there. That, ladies and gentlemen, is a weathered reefer car. One of my best. So, I'll probably just be doing touch-ups along the way as I have this car. But for now, I think it looks pretty good. For now, we're going to leave it like that. We're gonna give it a clear coat, and we're gonna see um, this baby on the rails at the club and here at my home layout. I will see you guys in another video. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm gonna be making a lot more live streams now that I have this set up at my desk. Everything's gonna be fine. Um, hopefully you guys liked. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video, and I will see you guys in the next one.